Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, I have an idiom for you today and it is like there's no tomorrow. And that's when you do something kind of carelessly uh, like there's no tomorrow. So, for example, he's spending money like there's no tomorrow. He's uh, busy cooking like there's no tomorrow. He's running like there's no tomorrow. And that search for the capsule in the water recently near the Titanic, they were searching like there was no tomorrow. Now, it sounds quite positive. It sounds like it's just about speed. But there's a little bit of a negative connotation there. Because when you say, uh, um, like there's no tomorrow, it means that maybe not a lot of care is being taken. So if someone's spending a lot of money like there's no tomorrow, it might mean that they're being careless. So... Uh, In the case of the search for the missing capsule, of course, time wasn't on their side. So they had to just do something quickly. Uh, So like there's no tomorrow. It's most commonly used with this idea of spending money. Although with spending money, I rather prefer the idiom like a knife going through butter. She's spending money like a knife going through butter. It means very, very quickly, you know. And with a knife going through butter, there's nothing negative about it except the rate at which she's spending. Uh, so, yeah, that's maybe a more more easier one to use, you know, like a knife going through butter or like there's no tomorrow. Um, Yeah, it's very interesting. So we hear that a lot in the English world. And speaking of hearing a lot of things in the English world, I've noticed something quite disturbing. And that is more and more students are using phrases like super good, crazy bad, crazy good, uh, super bad, terrible bad. I have no idea where this stuff came from, but it really makes my skin crawl. I don't like it at all because it's lazy. It's the kind of thing you would hear in a Scooby-Doo cartoon from the 1970s. Super good, crazy bad. It just sounds awful. I'm guessing it comes from some... Uh, American suburb, perhaps um, uh, some minority, I don't know, but it's horrible and it doesn't work grammatically. Uh, So it appears to be a trend right now amongst IT people. Um, I've heard it from a few different countries, so it's obviously spread. And strangely, When I've heard it, it seems to have come from the business world, which is doubly surprising, bearing in mind that the business world at least used to be extremely formal. Uh, So be very careful with that. It might be okay informally to use around the office, but don't try to use that with clients. And please, really, don't try to use that with me (laughs) because I'll get really upset. Okay, so yeah, crazy bad, super good, super cool. Keep it for your friends, yes. Oh, the news has been very depressing over the last few days. Um, it it seems to me that uh, our hearing is about this capsule and the sad death of, of these five victims. And on top of that, there's also news that... Uh, more and more people are turning to AI to learn languages. That came as a bit of a shocker for me. Um, I knew AI was popular, but I didn't know it was that popular. Although I think it depends on the language you're trying to learn 
I just tried it a minute ago to learn Farsi, and it, well, it didn't know what day of the week it is. Although it did give me a lot of really useless information in English about it. It was spewing out information like there's no tomorrow. It gave me a whole lecture about Farsi, and then I asked it to say something, and it failed completely. <laughs> so it's not that good. Um, yeah, it seems to be it's kind of taking over right now. I've heard a few language exchange partners complaining that they've been dumped in favor of AI. Really, I wouldn't rely on it, not at this early stage anyway. I think it's probably okay to use a system which has been designed using AI, but I wouldn't try to use ChatGPT or anything like that to learn because I don't think it knows enough and its pronunciation doesn't sound the best from what I can see. But it may be in English, it's, uh, it's better. It says here in the BBC News this morning, uh, this is a woman talking, she says, I'm just one of many people who have discovered in recent months the benefits of AI. Yeah, of course you are, dear. And uh, yeah, it goes on to have an interview with uh, an associate professor of applied linguistics. Uh, and she's saying that uh, there's a virtual companion that's been helpful in learning English. I wouldn't have thought a linguist would know much about that. You see, this is the thing. Some people, especially linguists, they get so lost in tiny little strange bits of the language that they lose sight of uh, what it's like to actually teach it. Linguists tend to be a little bit like theologians. You know, if you, if you ask a theologian uh, about uh, something related to a religious ritual, he's not really going to know so much about it. He understands the whole meaning. He understands the thoughts behind it, but he's useless at explaining what the ritual is. It's kind of like that. Linguists are the kind of very deep thinkers about language, but uh, ask them to explain anything? Oh, no. They're not usually the best at that. They're better at collating data as to how language is used. I used to have a friend who is studying linguistics, and I thought to myself, oh, great, someone studying linguistics. They'll be able to give me lots of information about teaching. Honestly, he was the most boring person. Uh, I was afraid to ask him what time it is in case he told me how the watch worked. Really, he was uh, so dull. It, for him, it was all about collecting data about where words are most used. His studies seemed to me to be more like... Uh, more like um, some kind of, of data analyst rather than anything to do with language. It was a really dull person. But uh, anyway, according to the BBC, a South African cafe owner has gone further in improving his Spanish grammar with the aid of AI. And then it says he had a hard time finding simple study tools, especially given his ADHD. What is that? I think, is that, is that the, the syndrome? Is it where you have attention deficits? Uh, so he started using ChatGPT to quickly generate and adapt study aids. Not with Farsi, he's not. <laughs> Maybe with English, perhaps. But, uh, oh no, no, I've never found it very useful. I asked it a few times about when my favorite actress was going to die. And it gave me this big moral American message about why we should not think about when uh, people are going to die. Oh dear. Not very good, I thought. But uh, anyway, yeah, very sad news about, uh, about death in the news. I'm not going to go on about this because it's very depressing. But um, yeah, I see an actress here has just announced that uh, when she dies, she wants to be sent to space. 
Oh dear. Really, you'd think they would come up with some other type of news. When I die, I want to be cremated. And then I'm going to come back as an egg timer. Yeah, just to annoy everyone. So that when you think your eggs are ready, they won't be. I'll be one of those little hourglasses. And you can put my ashes in the hourglass. You know those egg timers? You put enough sand in them for two minutes. Um, and then the, the sand drops through. And then when your eggs are ready, all the sand has gone through. Yeah, I'll be one of those. And then I'll upset everyone because I'll make sure that eggs either aren't cooked or they're banned completely. Maybe they'll put all of me in one of those uh, egg timers, but that would be called an hourglass. You know those big egg timers? The ones in the movies, they they obviously have too much sand to be egg timers because they last longer than two minutes. So they're called hourglasses. Yeah, they could put me in an hourglass maybe. That would be fun. And I could be a timer. Yeah, for an hour. So when really rich people say, okay, I'm going to study English for an hour, and then they will sit me on the table and turn over the hourglass so that the sand drops through and it'll be my ashes. Yeah, I'll make sure they study for an hour. In fact, I'll make sure they study for two hours. That would be good. Be better for their English so they can't run away. Yes, yes. Anyway, um, in other news today, perhaps something more cheerful, I see that the pop group Steps... I'm sure you know them. They they sang loads of songs in the 1990s. They were one of these kind of uh, young pop groups. Um, they've refused to sing in Dubai because of Dubai's uh, laws over homosexuality. So that's a big headline today. Steps refuse to sing in Dubai because they would have to sign a contract to say that they would never talk about sexuality. And of course, this month is Pride Month, and at least one of the members of STEPS is openly gay. Um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, on one hand, I can see what they're trying to do, but on the other hand, you can't just decide that a country should have the same laws as you have, regardless of how good they are. We have to respect other cultures. So it seems strange. Um, I mean, it seems a bit strange anyway that Steps would want to talk about sexuality. It's a pop group and not a particularly great pop group at that. So I, I don't know why they would want to go and start talking about their sexuality. They're there to sing, not to give us a lecture on who they're sleeping with. Seems a little bit strange. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I can see the point, of course, you know. It is perhaps the only way that uh, gay people can protest or try to get things moving. So that's in the, in the news today. Um... What else do we have? Yeah, another story is that uh, the EU flag uh, has been effectively banned from the London mayor's office. So seven years after the Brexit vote, they wanted to fly the EU flag to mark the seventh anniversary of the UK voting to leave the Union. I mean, I think that's a stupid idea anyway. But um, uh, the blue flag with 12 stars on it has apparently been removed uh, from a list of flags which is allowed to be displayed, which means the government have effectively banned it and prohibited it from being flown. I mean, I can understand why. We're not in the EU anymore. So we don't need to have a flag like that. But they wanted to 
uh, put it up just to mark the seventh anniversary. <laughs> it's a crazy idea anyway. Um, and they've been told they can't, and everyone's upset about this. Uh, and apparently the opposition to the government is considering extending voting rights to some EU citizens living in the UK if it wins the next general election. So you can see Brexit really isn't going away there. And I'm sure as time goes on, rules will be softening and we'll be maybe not back in the European Union, but I would guess we'll be more or less inside it because um, we're having so much trouble with exporting, importing, traveling, uh, foods coming in that the whole thing has effectively failed. And some leading politicians are now saying, look, <laughs> Brexit has failed. Can we just <laughs> reverse it or do something else? But I don't think that will be possible. Um, <clears throat> and they're, they're also uh, fighting about this EU flag. Uh, some government officials are saying, no, 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 it's not true. Others are saying it is true. So, yeah, there's all kinds of things happening with that. So, yeah, Brexit, not going well. And I still can't find eggs. Do you know, I went to the supermarket the other day and they had that sign up saying, remember, you can only buy one pack of eggs. And I thought, OK, yeah, yeah, one pack of eggs. But there was none. So I thought, oh, and so I ordered them in my um, my supermarket shopping, which is due to be delivered, I think, tomorrow. That's the ones where they watch me unpack, for those of you who listen to the podcast regularly, and there was no eggs. And I said to the man, I said, where's my eggs? And he said, oh, yeah, sorry, no, we, we couldn't uh, give you eggs. Uh, we didn't have any. No apology. I said to him, I said, well, um, uh, are you uh, going to refund me the money? He said, yeah. I said, well, an apology would have been nice. You know, were you going to tell me on email? He said, no, they don't apologize for that because they feel it's not their problem. Mm. So anyway, my, my, uh, my shopping's coming tomorrow. So I've ordered eggs again. So hopefully there'll be some eggs in the next uh, batch that's coming but um, yeah it's getting very hard to find things I mean eggs you would think eggs would be local but no no I can't find any apparently the problem is we do have local eggs but there isn't enough to go around so they usually sell a mixture of eggs which are imported from different places yeah it's all a mess tomatoes have finally appeared I'm pleased about that but I saw something in the shops the other day, Scottish wine. I mean, really, who is going to buy Scottish wine? That just doesn't sound right, does it? That's a little bit like putting a pineapple on a pizza, if you're Italian. It just, ooh, Scottish whiskey, those two things go together. But Scottish wine, oh no, no. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this. So... Yeah, eggs have been selling like there's no tomorrow just to finish. That's it. See you all soon. Bye.